Hey everyone, I'm Marina and this is Pineapple Knits. This is my channel dedicated to knitting, spinning, and weaving. You can connect with me on social media at Pineapple Yarn and you can connect with me on my website at pineappleyarn.com. Thank you so much for joining me again this week and it really seemed like I just did this. I feel like I just recorded. <laughs> it was a few days ago. Uh, it actually was the end of last week, but... I jinxed myself because at the very beginning of that episode I was talking about how something always goes wrong when I upload and I was talking about my microphone situation but as luck would have it it took me I think three days to upload to YouTube something always happens I'm telling you it's crazy hopefully it'll be smoother this week but uh, yeah, so today I'm wearing, and you'll see why later, um, but today I am wearing a hand spun sweater that I knit up, I think it was last year, it was about this time last year that I finished it up. And I love this sweater. So this is kind of like what I use for a sweatshirt. It's super comfy and I, I love it so much. I used a whole bunch of hedgehog fiber clubs and spun this yarn and actually did a combo ply with it. So I took each club, made singles, um, or spun singles, and then plied up different clubs with each other and arranged them. So I think I had f maybe four different clubs that I spun as singles, and then I plied them all together, plied different clubs with with other clubs, I guess. And this is what I came out to be, and I love it so much. It is just super comfy. It's about a DK weight, and it ended up being just like really eclectic, and I didn't really do a whole lot of color management on this. Um, I wanted it to be really eclectic, and I just, I really love it. I can't believe that it turned out so um, muted. We'll say that because hedgehog fiber clubs are actually they're known for just having really bright clubs uh i guess some of them are dark maybe that's what added to it but it's just funny how all the colors blended up to kind of this like just say mauvey almost like some brown tones and of course you can see like yellow right here got yellow right here but anyway i'm wearing that today and i'll talk about that in just a minute but let's see what I have going on here right now. I didn't do a whole lot of knitting this week. Um, like I said, it hasn't been that long since I recorded. <laughs> so um, I actually did got a little bit of progress on my next mitten. So here it is. This is, oh, I just love this so much. Look at that tweed and just that heathered yarn. It's just, oh my goodness, I love this so much. So this is Alifas Lopi. It's in, I did find out the colorway because I lost the ball band to it, but it is the colorway, I believe, fire red tweed. So I'm pretty sure it's discontinued. I love it so much though, and I have so so many little green monsters, like so much jealousy <laughs> over these mittens. And I'm knitting this for my oldest daughter, but I have at least two other daughters who want this specific yarn in mittens. So, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it, but if you know, if you just happen to see in a yarn shop, if you have some in your stash and you would like to part with it, Please let me know. I think it's fire red tweed. I believe that's the colorway. Um, I've done a little bit of web search. I haven't really come up with anything. And like I had said last week in the episode, I got this maybe 10 years ago. <laughs> so they could have discontinued it right away and it might just be a, yeah, a search that I'm not going to be successful. But anyway, so the pattern I'm using is from Tin Can Knits and I believe the Full title of the pattern is The World's Simplest Mittens. 
if you've never knit mittens before, you should have really try it out because first of all, this pattern's free, so you really don't have anything to lose. And it comes with a great number of variations. So you can do, um, I don't know if there's fingering weight, but I definitely know there's DK worsted and chunky, and I am doing the chunky version here. I did go down to needle size, and uh, it's, you know, as with all Tin Can Knits patterns, they are such good teachers, and their patterns are written so well. So anyway, mittens are really fast. I just haven't done a lot of knitting this week. I've done a row here and there. But I'm, I'm at the point where I'm going to start doing the decreases and there's a few decrease rows and then I'll just kitchener the top and then do the thumb. So this has been really fun. This yarn is awesome. I love it so much. It is definitely rustic. It's Icelandic wool, but it is so warm and weatherproof and it's just unique and I really like it. Um, the children love this yarn, which is so funny because everything I knit them is superwash merino wool because things get felted all the time here if it's not. So anyway, I will probably be buying more of this, obviously not this colorway, but other colorways uh, to knit more mittens. So it's been really fun and I just want to show you my progress on that. And so Really, that is all I have been knitting on this week, which is uh, just crazy. But let me jump into spinning, because that's what I've been spending a majority of this week on. And I have a whole bunch of spinning goodies right here next to me. But I have, um, I'm going to put a photo on the screen. Earlier, several months ago, I purchased four different colorways of fiber from Emily from Wolfine, who is a great dyer and she has beautiful fiber. Really, she's a nice person. <laughs> I really couldn't say more. Um, she's, she's great. So I really like her fiber. And so I purchased all this fiber with the intention of making another one of these sweaters. So this was a combo ply and that's what I intend on doing with this fiber. Um, and so here's where I'm at so far. This was the first bobbin that I spun singles with. Let me just show you them all together. So I have three so far and they're so pretty. I really, really like these colors. I chose all kind of summery colors. Like this one is just so pretty with the aquas and purples and blues. And then I think I spun this one next. This is, so this one, I can't remember what fiber this is. I think I've put this one away, but I do have it in the picture. So I will, um, I'll definitely put it below what this is. I can't remember the colorway name, but it is so nice to spin. The second one that I spun is this one. I will put the, the name of this below. I know this is BFL. And I, this was not the most consistent spin. Um, what I did is I split the fiber lengthwise and I pre-drafted one strand of it and then the next I did not pre-draft. And it really made a difference with the consistency of my spinning. And so it is what it is. Um, I'm not super concerned with this because I've seen <laughs> how much uh, or how forgiving inconsistencies, I should say this, I've seen how plying and then finishing the yarn and then actually doing the knitting, it is so forgiving to inconsistencies in your yarn. So don't worry if your yarn's not perfect because um, it really does turn out okay. And then this one is just super gorgeous. I love this one. These are all different fibers. So I have Targi, Cordale, and BFL. I think they're all those fibers, not blends, but each one is a different single fiber. 
So I'm really happy with these so far. And um, what I plan on doing, um, I do have one on the wheel right now. And I'll just show you uh, what that fiber looks like. So it is really, really pretty. I have some peachy bits in it and just this deep orchid and pink and blue. So it's, it's really, really pretty. Um, what I plan on doing is numbering these one through four, one through four, and there will be two bobbins of each color. So I split these lengthwise down and then basically spun half of the fiber. So I will end up with two bobbins of singles for each color. And I will ply them with each other. So like number one and number two, I will ply together. Number two and number three, I'll ply together. Three and four, and then four and one. And so they're all a nice mix of, of each other. And um, doing it that way, every fiber, every numbered fiber is used twice. And I will end up with four skeins of yarn, and I am aiming for about a worsted weight, which I'm pretty sure I will hit just fine. Um, I do, I found that I was spinning finer and finer, and then really made a concerted effort. I'm sure if you've been watching <laughs> this podcast for a while, you will remember me saying that I really wanted to do a nice DK weight yarn. And so I really made an effort to get back to that. And so I think that is the story with a lot of spinners is we go finer and finer and then it's kind of hard to go back. And um, so I've really made an effort to do that. So I think this is going to be really fun, really fun sweater pattern. Um, I This was a great pattern and I really liked it. And I will plan on doing another simple pattern with these yarns just to really um, help them to shine. And it's going to be a very eclectic, very fun sweater. I'm super excited about it. <laughs> so that's what I was spinning this week. And um, as you can see, I have a whole bunch more singles or fibers just kind of split and all ready to go. So I've got these and I am spinning this, I should say, I'm spinning this on my electric eel wheel and that's been my wheel of choice. It's very easy. Um, I have it, I'll just show you what I'm gathering everything from. I just have this white basket and it just sits on a shelf and my wheel is actually right here. And, um, I mean, it's just so easy to spin on this wheel. It's so, I wanna say it's so effortless. It's so effortless. So, I mean, it's such a luxury <laughs> to be able to sit down. You can sit down on the couch and you can spin, you can ply. It's, it's really, really, uh, it's, it's a luxury. That's how it feels to me, it's a luxury. And the nice thing is I can tuck this away. No little hands get it, it's safe. So anyway, I'm having so much fun doing this and um, I just have one more bobbin to go of a colorway and then I will go back through and um, pre-draft the, the other halves of the fibers and spin them up on different bobbins. I probably will have to ply some of these bobbins together only because I don't have was eight bobbins. I don't think I have eight bobbins and then plus bobbins for plying. <laughs> so I will have to ply before I start another round, but this is what the, I'll show you the difference um, with fiber here. So this is what fiber looks like when it's not pre-drafted. And this is actually, I think these are um, halves of the same braid, but this is how fluffy it is after pre-drafting. And so as you can imagine, if you're spinning from a fiber that was in a braid, um, it gets compacted. And if you f take the time to just kind of floof it up and um, just a little bit, it's it's not a whole lot, but 
I mean, it really expands so much and it's just a lot easier to draft. I feel like it helps with consistency and you just get a better finished product. Uh, that's what I found and I totally made a mistake in doing a uh, part of this not drafting it first because um, it is much more inconsistent and you know it just it is what it is and I'm not going to stress about um, the inconsistencies of my hand spun because if I do that and I get too bogged down in those details I just don't spin so um, anyway that is what I'm working on right now. I'm so excited. It feels so good to be spinning again. And when I'd finished, um, let's see, where is it at? I have a whole bunch of hand spun behind me um, right here. This is a lot of hand spun. And then this is Glowworm. This is a yarn that is in the shop right now. But um, when I finished this yarn up last week, I just, I really enjoyed spinning this so much and so um, I've found that for me I get really into spinning and I do a ton of spinning and then I, I take a little break and I do other things and then I something comes up something lights that interest again and I do a ton of spinning it's kind of funny but um, anyway I already showed that last week so that is what I've been working on this week. Um, I do plan on opening my Wolf Fiend Advent Calendar. It's a spinning Advent Calendar, and I do plan on doing that in February. So I'm I'm kind of focused on getting this mostly done at least <laughs> before I start the Advent Calendar because I um, I just like to tie up projects before I start new ones. So. That has been so much fun this week. Um, in other creative crafty news, um, I actually dyed a sweater quantity of my camouflage colorway. <laughs> I know some of you have been waiting for me to do this, but I want to make sure that I can, I, I use kind of a different technique to really get those deep saturated colors. And so I wanted to dye a lot of yarn, like a sweater quantity, to make sure that I can uh, recreate the camouflage colorway that you saw me uh, dye up and knit some fingerless mitts for my husband. And that was a couple of months ago, I think. So I have that drying right now and I will share it with you. And um, I plan, Right now, I plan on dyeing some up um, in the next two weeks. And so if you want some, please let me know. Just even if you're interested, it's not, you know, a promise to purchase or anything. But if you are interested, let me know what base you would like it in. So if you're interested in my Lani sock base or a Lani DK base, um, the sweater quantity that I just dyed up is on my DK base. Um, I actually gifted it to my husband for his birthday uh, with the promise that I will knit him a sweater. So that's why I dyed it up. And I thought it was the perfect opportunity. I knew that I could get a camouflage-ish colorway that he would be happy with, but I wanted to make sure for you guys that I got it a, a good one. I wanted to make sure it was good. <laughs> so he's the guinea pig. Um, I will be sharing that uh, project with you in the future, but um, do let me know what base you'd be interested in. I was thinking of dyeing, it, dyeing some up on my Lonnie Sock base and Lonnie DK. I don't really know if anyone would be interested in a gold sparkle on with camouflage. I don't know. Anyway, I was thinking of those two. So let me know if you're interested and... Um, right after this, I will be filming a shop update preview. I will be having a shop update this Friday, which is the 21st of January at 8 p.m. Eastern Time at PineappleYarn.com. So I will have at least five tonals and several, maybe five different other colorways, maybe. I'm not sure. But I do have quite a, f a, quite a few tonals. And I, as always, uh, 
they're just the perfect combination. <laughs> so I always uh, am so excited to see them come together because um, I come up with new colors and things just kind of by accident. So it's really fun. So if you're interested, I will be filming that right after this. And anyway, that is it from me this week. Thank you so much for joining me. If you liked this episode, I would love if you'd give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I will see you hopefully during the shop update preview and definitely next week and catch you up on all of my crafting. Until then, I hope you're doing so great and I will see you next time. Bye.